Hey there, Fit Fam. Welcome to the only podcast where we're breaking the mold and rewriting the rules. I'm here to debunk the myths, spill the tea, and serve a hefty dose of reality. No matter where you're at in your journey, we've got something for everybody. So buckle up because we're about to unleash the basics in the most unapologetic way possible. From shedding pounds to embracing your inner badass, I'm here to remind you that skinny is so last season and the basics are anything but boring. So grab your favorite piece of protein and your water bottle and get ready to be empowered, entertained, and educated because being a basics bitch has never looked this good. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Don't Call Me Skinny. All right, I hope you guys have had an amazing week so far. We just got dumped with another like four inches, five inches of snow or something like that all day today, which was fantastic. Not, um, but luckily it's not like, I mean, it's sticking. Obviously we got like four or five inches, but, but the roads aren't bad and that that's really, really good. Um, so I'm excited for that, but you guys, this is going to be an intense episode. So I hope you're ready for buckling up and getting on the little emotional roller coaster with me because I want to be transparent about some things that I'm working through myself to maybe make you feel not so alone or maybe make you feel a little bit more normal during this process of a weight journey <clears throat> or not even just weight, but health, just a health journey in general. Um, as I've talked about many times on this podcast, I, oh, many times, right? I had a realization this last week. My um, husband's real estate company is going to have this gala ball thing this coming weekend. And if I'm going to be super honest, I haven't worn anything like super fancy, um, at least like this kind of fancy, since my bulk. Okay. So if you haven't listened to that episode, I really don't know what fucking episode it is. It was sometime over the summer, June or July. I don't know. So quite a while ago that I discussed my book. If you're new here, welcome. I'll give you a very mini synopsis of this. Last November, no, I mean, not like last November, like a year ago, this past November, I hired a coach that I trusted very, 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 very much to take me through a book, something I'd never done before, something i didn't trust my actual self to do by myself because I had never done it. And it made me a little bit nervous getting into uh, a space where I'm going to be adding weight, adding calories. And I was fearful that some bad habits might creep back in. And the short of the story is the fact that they did creep back in. Even having a coach, they creeped back in. Even having somebody guiding me, helping me, somebody I had access to, it creeped back in. And unfortunately, (laughs) unfortunately, during that bulk, which you should really only be gaining like maybe a half a pound average a month, I gained about 30 pounds back in three months. Now this coach knew what my weight was, knew that it was trending up this quickly. And it left me feeling, and I, it's actually the, the podcast, um, Title is called, I'm a, I feel like a fraud or I am a fraud or I don't exactly remember what. Because as I'm preaching to everybody over this podcast and to all my clients about getting the basics and handling your health and getting in water and making sure you're a protein, I fell into this place of, I just kind of let shit go and wasn't really tracking my food because it's like, what the fuck's the point? I get like 2,800 calories. I can eat whatever the fuck I want. No big deal. And I know I'm hitting my protein because of how much I'm consuming and, right? And so I get into this like very bad headspace where old habits started creeping back in. Oh, I'll let that one go. Or I don't have to track everything I put in my mouth or insert whatever you wanted. I should not have been higher than about 23, 2400 calories total ever throughout that whole bulk. And there was a period of time that I was eating that like a month month and a half prior to even stopping my bulk. And it got to a point where I said, I need to stop. I feel uncomfortable. I am getting, it's literally, it's fat at this point. I was gaining a lot of fat. Um, I was over consuming food like a motherfucker. And I had to put a stop to it. I had to say, nope, 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 nope. So fast forward, I I do a little bit of like a, a mini cut, if you will. And I lost some of the weight. 
<clears throat> about 15 to 20 pounds I lost. I'd say 15-ish, 15-ish pounds total, averaging. Oh, always an average, ladies. It's always an average, never exact numbers, okay? An average of about 15 pounds. I'm literally right now playing with this piece of paper in my hand. I have these two little scrap pieces of paper that I'm playing with because this is really difficult to talk about. I just want to be super clear that we make it look like we have all of our shit together all the time. All of us, you know, all these fit influencers. No, they're fucking liars. If they tell you everything is perfect all the time, this is very difficult for me to talk about. So anyway, I just thought I'd share that. So I, I decided, so I went on this mini cut, dropped about 15 pounds and went back and I maintained this 15 pound cut because I, I was training for a powerlifting meet. Well, if you're in a cut, you can't get stronger. So it was very like, this is, I, I, I can't work against myself super much, right? Like super bad. But if we're going to be honest, this powerlifting meet was almost two months ago now. It was December 9th. And I'm having a really difficult time owning my own shit again and getting consistent with tracking again and knowing that the reason that shit's not doing the what I want it to do is because I'm not doing the shit that I need to do. And that's a really hard moment. But I will say it didn't really hit me. Like it hit me like I, I had to buy new pants because I'd gotten rid of all my other pants. So I, I had to buy a pant, a couple pairs of pants, um, a size one, two sizes bigger. And now I'm in pants that are only one size as big as I was. But it got super fucking real <laughs> Monday when I went to go look for a dress. So actually what I did was try on a dress that used to fit me very well. I really loved it. I thought, oh, I don't know if I can squeeze into this. Like, I'm not really sure. And I couldn't. I couldn't. If it was one size bigger, I probably could cut it. I probably could make it work. Probably. But that was a big reality check for me. And then I have this brilliant idea that I'm going to go dress shopping because I'm like, I need a fucking dress for this fucking gala. So I go dress shopping. I only went to one store and I am planning on going to more, but nothing fit. Everything I just felt, I'm going to be, I'm going to be super honest. I'm going to be super transparent. You guys, I just felt fat and everything I put on, nothing fit right. And I had this moment in I had this moment in the dressing room where I texted my husband and I said, I'm so disappointed because I said I was never going to be this person again. And I allowed myself to be somebody at a moment I didn't want to be. And I allowed it to happen. And that is hard, but it's also a piece of this process because it's never going to look perfect. It's never, I can blame everything. Yeah. This, this last month, this whole January, it's literally been a fuck show in my house. And I don't say these things to complain, right? I know there are people that have much less than I have. Do not get me wrong. I, I hear you. And I'm very grateful for all the things that I do have. But when we talk about, and I talk about all the time, your capacity, your ability to handle hard, your, your, your ability to show up for yourself. You guys, it's been really hard for me to show up for myself this January. And if I'm going to be super honest, this has been an issue since about June. And I know that I've mentioned this one other, at least on one other podcast where I was like, I didn't even realize in the month of June, I had my biggest month ever because I was so knee deep in shit. I couldn't, I I didn't, didn't even know. I didn't even recognize it. I had no idea. Like literally my business coach had to be like, knock, knock, knock. Hello. (laughs) Are you aware? No, no, actually I'm not. Thank you. Okay. And I always talk about our capacity and our ability to hold and it has been very difficult since J- J- May, June. We've gone through a large transition in our home. 
I don't think that was a real word, transition. (laughs) We've gone through a large transition in our home. I don't think people realize the, I don't even know the word I'm looking for, but I don't think people realize the vastness of my husband's previous job. Um, Imagine, and I know some of you might be single moms and this is not me being preachy preachy or anything like that. I've been a single mom too. Um, But when you are in it with somebody and that somebody has gone for nine months out of the year and you go to bed every single night by yourself and you kind of have some space, you're given some space. And then all of a sudden you don't have that same space anymore. You don't have that same, and this is not a dig on my husband. This is not a dig um, at all for him. It's an adjustment. It's just like when he came home, like he had to figure out how he fit in to this family because he had been gone and his job was to stay safe, right? Essentially, he worked overseas. That's his job. Stay safe. This is your job. You sniff cars and then run like hell if you have to. <laughs> like, <laughs> I mean, you don't sniff cars. He didn't sniff cars. His dog, right? So that was his job. This is stay safe. My job was to run the house and make sure the kids are fed and well and taken care of and run my business. Once I started that, that was my job. That's what I did. And so I don't think people realize like the vastness of eight, almost seven, seven years we spent the majority of the time not together. I didn't have to run, you know, every little thing by him or tell him every little detail of everything. And it's not that I have to do all those things now, but it's a very different life when you live somebody. Think about if you are with somebody prior to that, could you just like go get your nails done or go to the bar or just go shopping and not explain yourself and just do whatever you kind of wanted? I I mean, I did kind of whatever I wanted to do. I didn't have to explain myself. And so that changes the dynamic of a relationship. And then you add in the fact that we have the kids and the kids are all super involved this year being in high school. That's another big change for us, right? All of these things are very big changes. He works nights now. That's a big change for us because he's home, but he's like not home. It's very difficult. And so basically since May, June time, I have been going through this whole like outside of being super pissed off about gaining almost 30 pounds, being really pissed off that I hired somebody that I trusted to help me do this and it fucking blew up in my face. And it, it was because I was almost at that same point. No, I wasn't 250 pounds. I, right. Okay. I wasn't 250 pounds. Great. But I was having those same feelings and same thoughts. And that's why y'all, the number doesn't fucking matter. The number doesn't fucking matter because it's how you feel about how you feel. <laughs> if that makes sense. It didn't matter that I wasn't 240, 50 pounds again. It mattered that these intrusive thoughts started to flood again. And I got mad at myself for allowing this to happen. How did you do this? And it got to a point where I shut it down. I said, I can't do this anymore. Like I told her, I said, February 1st, we have to start a cut. Like I cannot, I cannot do this. I cannot do this. And People are always like, oh my God, I can't believe you ate 2,800 calories. Y'all, it, it's not that difficult. Trust me. And you know, if you are carrying extra weight right, right now, it's because you over consume food. Again, I don't give a shit. All the other things, all your diagnosis, all your medications, I don't give a fuck. You take all that out. Excuse me. You take all that out. You take it all away. What's left is your relationship with yourself and your relationship with your food. And I allowed that to go south a little bit. And so I'm sitting in this dressing room yesterday. I ended up buying two things, neither of which I really like very much. Going, you know, maybe you should just go by yourself. Have you ever ever said that? Where you can't find something to wear and you think you look like a a cow and everything. Like these are literal thoughts, guys, in my head. I want to be super honest about this. I know I'm not alone here. You don't want to get into the swimsuit. You don't want to fucking, you know, 
get in the picture. You don't, whatever the case is, these are real things. I told him, maybe you should just go by yourself. I just, I'm really upset that I said I would never go here again. And I'm here again, where I'm sitting in a dressing room in tears because I did not stay true to who I was. Fully, fully, fully stay true to who I was. And that is a fucking hard ass pill to swallow. And that's really hard to say and it's hard to admit. But now that I'm about six months out of that other podcast and I still feel like I'm riding that struggle bus, I still feel like I'm crawling out of a hole. That is how I have said and explained January. Somebody asked in a group that I'm in, in a membership space that I'm in, how is everybody's January? I said, I feel like I'm crawling out of a hole. I feel like I'm climbing and I'm trying to get to the top of that hole and it just keeps getting further and further away. And, you know, my husband, who's like super supportive, super consistent, super amazing. How can I help you? What do you need from me? Like, you know, and for me, it's just like, I don't know. (laughs) I don't know what I need. I need to get out of my own way. I need to get over my own bullshit. I mean, honestly, that's what it really comes down to. I I had told somebody, um, I was a, a guest on a podcast. I recorded a podcast with a really good friend, Jetta. If you listen to all of my podcasts, she, I did an interview with her uh, a while ago, back I think in September. Um, I think it aired in October. And she... Uh, has a podcast and I'm I was a guest on her podcast and legitimately like we talked about this today I said you know we have to get so narrow focused and and I made this post on my Instagram stories and I'm really glad I did and I'm really going to coin this phrase which is go so hard at what you're doing, people fucking think you're delusional because that is what happened the first time I did this. I want to say the first time, like during this process and this journey. There's a lot of things I wish I could go back and change. One being telling this coach, I don't want to, once I hit this X weight, I'm done. I cannot go above this weight. Not because of the number on the scale or it means something, but because It's going to get me out of control. It's going to put me in a place that's going to let me go spiraling and I can't get there. I didn't know this. Why? Because I had never done this before, which is why I hired a motherfucking coach to help me because of that, because I had never done that before. So I was hoping their guidance, like at some point they're going to see how quickly my weight is trending. Oh, you're good. Really? I don't know about this. And even though I knew it wasn't right, I still let it go. Why? Because I'm like, I haven't eaten this much food and I don't know how long and this is amazing. And I did feel good. My periods were better. My energy was great. My sleep was better. I was getting strong as fuck in the gym. And I was like, this is amazing until it wasn't amazing. There's a lot of things I go back and I do a lot differently than I, than knowing now, knowing. And to be honest, Having that experience as a coach, being trained by another coach, if y'all think for one motherfucking second that I would ever sign on a client and do some shit like that, no fucking way. Now, I will push you. I will take you out of your comfort zone. Never in a place, though, to go the complete opposite direction of your goals. Yes, the goal was to go through a bulk. The goal was not to gain 30 motherfucking pounds. That shouldn't, that is, that is in three months. That is not okay. That is not acceptable. That is not proper. So it made me this experience while it taught me a lot of things. I can now go back and say, this is what I would have done differently. This is something I'll never do with my own client. Because the moment it gets, starts to get like, whoa, what's happening here? It's like, no, we stop. Your weight should not be trending this way. Weight should only really be going up. Mm, half a pound a month. Otherwise, everything else that you're adding is fat. 
Like you should be gaining no more than like a half a pound to a pound and a half ish, ish a month. That's it. You're like, your calories don't need to be in excess over your maintenance. Mine were in excess by probably like six to 700 over. And what I thought that was going to do was allow me to eat a little bit more food on this cup, but it really hasn't allowed that piece, maybe slightly, maybe slightly. And part of it is just getting consistent with tracking, bringing awareness to how much am I actually eating right now? Oh, okay. I don't know how much I'm eating. And, and really zoning back in, getting so fucking zoned in that people think I'm delusional. People think I'm fucking insane. That's the goal. Because again, I don't want to end up back where I started. I don't want to be 240 pounds again. And that is going to require the same intentionalities that I had eight years ago. It's different now. I, I'm a lot more aware now. That's why I fucking stopped that bulk. I'm a lot more aware now. I am very aware of what I'm doing. It's about getting out of my own way again, though. It's about getting off my bullshit. Like, get over yourself. Get over the fuck yourself. And I don't want to spend another day in a dressing room saying, I'm here again. I'm here again. I'm here again. Because I'll tell you what, that's not me anymore. I, that's, that's not why I do what I do. And it's very hard to admit that that's kind of this, like I started going back to those same habits and th- those same, you know, I, the intrusive thoughts. And I'm like, wow, this isn't who I am, but it's definitely turning back into who I was. And I don't like that. And again, it's about being aware about it. The, the, I, I talked about this, maybe someday I'll make a podcast about it, but I talked about this at an Empowered Moms event. If you don't know what they are, go look them up. Um, I talk about all the time. If you literally just Google Empowered Moms, you'll probably find her, Dr. Emily Jacobs. She has a group. But I spoke at their their monthly in-person meeting a couple weeks ago, and it's what I talked about was awareness and action. And the one piece that was always missing in between was acceptance. I can have awareness and take action. I can have awareness and take action. I can have awareness and take action. But if I never accept that I am the person that brought me to that place, it doesn't fucking matter. I can blame this. I can blame that. Well, then I have awareness. I can take action. I have awareness. I can take action. But at no point in time am I taking fucking responsibility. And that, my friends, is the key. I have to take full responsibility that I allowed a coach to do what they did. That's on me. I could have stopped at 20 pound gain and said, whoa, time out. Hey, it's a little much here. Did I do that? Nope. Whose fault is that? That's fucking my own fault. Fucking my own fault. It is my fault that I sat in a dressing room yesterday trying on dresses in tears, upset, mad, and angry because I allowed myself to not take responsibility for what I was allowing to happen and stopping it before it got out of control. And I don't give a shit, coach, no coach. Coach or no coach. I did express to this coach that I was very uncomfortable. I was like really uncomfortable. That... The, the amount of weight I was putting on was very quick. I thought it was too fast. No, 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 you're good, you're good. No, you're getting really strong. Wow, look at you go. Wow, your, your periods are great. Your biofeedback is stellar. Great. I mean, I was consuming right around 1,000 calories just in fats, which is a lot. And no, fat doesn't make you fat. Overconsumption of food makes you fat. <laughs> okay. 
So it's my own responsibility. I have to accept that I allowed that to happen, that I didn't stop it when I should have before it got out of hand, that I almost took, if you will, advantage of that situation thinking, oh, my coach has got my back. If I get too out of control, they're going to tell me, right? That's the job of the coach, right? If they get out of, if I get out of control, they're going to tell me, they're going to reel it in for me, right? They did not. And I was not able to reel it in myself at that point because I'm like, why would this coach? I mean, obviously what I'm doing must be right. I've, I'd never done a bulk. I've put other people in a bulk, but I've never been in a bulk. Putting somebody else in a bulk is very different than having one myself. I'm glad I've had this experience, even though it was a shitty one, because it will only make me a better coach to help somebody else go through a bulk, which is awesome. But that being said, (laughs) yesterday sucked. Yesterday was awful. It was terrible. And I still have this like, well, maybe he should just go on his own because I really don't like what I bought. I think it's awful and I think it looks gross. That's the only thing I could think of. It's like, it looks fat. I couldn't even like zip half the things up partially because I'm not coordinated enough. And you know how sometimes a zipper is like, I don't even know if it'll zip. I have no clue because I couldn't get it fully zipped. Like that sucks. I want, I want to walk into a space and feel good about not what I look like. It has nothing to do with what I look like. I just told you guys about 15 minutes ago. It has nothing to do with the number on the scale because I'm not 240 pounds right now. So it has nothing to do with that. It has how to do with how I feel about how I look. It has everything to do with how I feel about how I let it all go. Not all, I don't want to say I let it all go, but like how I allowed myself to go to other places that I knew better. I had made this comment on one of my podcasts recently about who would not want to walk into a motherfucking room like the most confident bitch in the room? Anybody? Anybody not want to walk into a room feeling confident as fuck? I know I do. And I'm really worried on Sun on Saturday, all I'm going to be thinking about is the fact that I'm uncomfortable as fuck in what I'm wearing. That's all I can think about is how uncomfortable I'm going to be. But at the same time, I'm thinking of this as maybe an opportunity to engage myself in getting out of my own bullshit. Maybe this is kind of like the push off the ledge. It's like, well, maybe you're going to understand now again why this is so important to you. Maybe you forgot. Maybe it slipped your brain. And here's your motherfucking reminder. Here's life. Here's life again. Here she comes. She's like, hey, bitch, I'm back. (laughs) And maybe, just maybe, These things that are energy draining for me right now, these things that are leaking energy for me, my furnace, our basement flooding, nothing's going right, everybody was sick, all these things really in the grand scheme don't matter as much as I allow them to. Because the reality and the truth is, I don't have fucking any control over that shit. I have no control over my basement flooding. I have no control over my furnace not working. I have fucking no control over anybody getting sick. What do I have control over? The fuck goes in my mouth. And what I do, how I talk to myself. Those are the things that are important. That is what truly, honestly matters. Those are the things that I should be focusing on so much so that people think I'm motherfucking delusional. 
And I ask of you, are you focusing so hard on these things that people think you're delusional? You're fucking psycho about it. Yup, that's me. I was so proud when people would tell me, wow, that's intense. Yes, it is. (laughs) Thank you. Next. This was a harsh reality check for me. But I really think it's almost that little, like I said, push off that ledge. That it's like, remember who you are. Remember who you are. And fucking lead your people that way. I mean, I don't that sounds maybe a little bit weird. But I'm always a driver of I lead first. I go first. I will lead. It doesn't mean that I'm perfect. So don't get it twisted where you're like, Sarah, but yeah, but you're not perfect. I'm not, obviously. But I am going to lead so that you can see too. You don't have to be perfect either. But I want you to remember who you are at your core, at your driving force, and step into that person. Right now I have a couple. I'm just going to, I'm going to, I'm going to dote. I'm going to dote on some of my clients right now. I have a client that joined with me maybe six, eight weeks ago. I don't even remember at this point. I feel like I've known this lady for my whole life. And she is doing things like joining this group and that group. And I mentioned this the other day. And she's just like, she went and had a manicure and pedicure she hasn't had in five years, she said. She's I haven't had one in five years. Man, that felt good. I have another client who had a check-in this week. She's 53 years old and she restarted school again. And she's really kind of struggling. It's a big change for her. And in her check-in, and even in some of her messages to me, she said, sometimes I wonder why I did this. Sometimes I'm not sure what I was thinking. And today... In her check-in, I reminded her. It's because it's who you are. Step into that person. I said, do you know how many women are scared to do what you're doing right now? Do you know how many women don't step into who they want to be? Do you know how many women look at other women and go, damn, I wish I could do that. Damn. I want to be more like her. Wow. She's confident as fuck. Holy shit. She'd be really fun to hang out with. Oh my gosh. She's the life of the party. She's so cool. Yeah. You know, and as I'm thinking through all these things, it's interesting too. (laughs) And this is like total side note because I literally am just having this, this conversation in my head. As I'm talking through this, people often tell me, oh my God, you're so funny. Oh my gosh, you need your own reality TV show. Like you're so funny. Oh my gosh, you crack me up. Oh my gosh, you're so funny. All these things is what I hear all the time. And now that I'm thinking about this and I'm talking about stepping into who you are and this is, you know, people want to be you, right? There's a piece of me that wonders like, I always tried to, bring light to situations or make, I don't want to say make fun of things, but like kind of like have these little quips or have these little like moments where it's like, maybe if I'm funny, they won't notice that I'm fat or they won't notice my ugly teeth. And I'm having those kinds of moments where I'm like, man, maybe that's a thing. Maybe that's real. Maybe that's what I, maybe that's why I use sense, my sense of humor the way I do right? And this other thought, literally, I'm just having these thoughts as I talk, as I talk through all this, guys, this is what this is all about, really discovering who you are. I was like, so like excited to get my teeth all, you know, done up and fixed. And I was like, just like, this is going to be amazing. I'm gonna get my braces off. Life's gonna be great. I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be hot. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna have good teeth. This is gonna be awesome. 
except when I got my braces off, I started gaining all that weight during that bulk. And I was like, man, I gave up the, the, I got one thing, I gave up the other. And it's not that I gave it up. It's just that I got real complacent with it. Real sideways. So, I don't really know what I'm looking to bring to you here besides a little bit of transparency and a little bit of you're not alone and maybe a little bit of we're not perfect. Even your little fit flu, fit influencers you see all over social media. Guys, they have some demons in their closets. They aren't they aren't willing to show you. I'm willing to show you because I think it's important for you to see this process. So, I'd love to hear if this resonated with you, if this hit with you. Uh, you can leave me a five-star review if you really enjoyed it. Share it. Tell other women. Go listen to this podcast, you guys. Okay. I will catch you all on Friday No Filter. No idea what that's going to be like, but buckle up because I bet it's going to be good. Thanks so much for listening today. If you laughed, learned, or just felt a vibe, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Your support keeps this ass train chugging along. If you're ready to embrace the basics with a twist, follow me on social media. Links are in the show notes and let's see the ways we can work together. All right, basics bitches. You're not just listeners. You're part of the revolution. Remember, skinny's out, basics are in, and you're looking damn good doing it. So until next time, stay basic.